As any watcher of recent anime can tell you, the last 4 or 5 years has seen its fair share of shows marketing themselves as slice of life. It's now gotten to the point where some fans flat out ignore the slice of life offerings every season and just focus on the quote unquote good stuff. And that's a shame, because there's a lot of good to be found in this misunderstood genre. Sure, you have quite a few that are pretty shitty or average at best, but that's to be expected of any genre. The huge number of slice of life titles being released gives that impression that the genre is on a downward trend, but if you average them all out, you end up with a ratio of good to bad pretty much equal to the mecha, action, romance, etchy, you name it genre. Nonetheless, amidst the Moe Blob Garden are some decent shows and even a few gems worth checking out. And today, on Anime Days, we'll be focusing on one of these worthwhile shows. A little known niche series known to some as that anime with those wide faces, but known to all as Hitamati Sketch. It's got its faults and it's got its pros, but before we get started, do let me warn you. Be sure your nut bladder is ready for this, because we're about to get wide. So very, very wide. And so, in the end... Was this show really worth my time, and will it be worth yours? Well, I think I'll let you know get the ball rolling on that one. Now I'd like to start by clarifying one key point. Though four seasons of this show have been produced with a probable fifth season in the works, the following review will focus only on the first two, Hitamati Sketch and its sequel, Hitamati Sketch X365. <laughs> Hitamati Sketch, known as Sunshine Sketch to some, is an ESHK that's healing for the uninitiated, slice of life series based on a four coma manga of the same name, first produced in 2007 and animated by Studio Shaft a name best known for its Prilla Magi, Madoka Magica, and Monogatari series, though also backing many lesser known, but arguably just as good or even better shows and adaptations, including the very show I'm reviewing. But enough of all that, now that we've gotten all of the technical stuff out of the way, why don't we go now and take a look at this anime's story and plot. The story of Hiramari Sketch is, at best, a simple one. Our main character Yuno is beginning her first year at Yamabuki High School, a special school for the most artistically talented of students. With this being a top tier school and her home being hours away, Yuno elects to live alone in a small apartment complex directly across the street from her new school, the Hiramari Apartments. And there, she meets the three other tenants, Mieko, Hiro, and Sae. They quickly befriend one another, and that's about it. The series follows the day to day lives of these four girls as they experience life and friendship for the first time. So as you can probably tell from that description, there isn't much to expect in terms of plot development, so I won't even try to bullshit my way through it. What I will do though, is give a brief rundown of the series' overall structure and what I believe are its most relevant plot points before moving on to a more in-depth character analysis. First and foremost, the story is intentionally told out of order. Unlike Haruhi or Bakano, where the non-chronological storytelling adds a certain element of mystery or suspense to the story, you know my sketch feels out of order for no real reason at all. It's not too noticeable at first, but you may start to notice strange references to events that have or have not yet happened, or to people that have or have not yet been introduced. For example, in season 1, there's a scene where Yuno wakes up late for school because she stayed up late finishing a painting, or so she says, for the next day's art festival. Shit happens and Miyako ends up submitting the unfinished painting in Yuno's place, much to her dismay. But then, in season 2, we get an episode taking place the day before, showing us exactly what Yuno was doing and why she stayed up so late confusing much? But that's really a minor peeve at best. You probably won't even notice it, and even if you do, it doesn't really take away from the show in any meaningful way. The other point worth mentioning, and this will either make or break the series for you, is that the story is extremely formulaic. Every single episode, with only one or two exceptions, follows the same structure. First, begin with some variation of Yuno waking up in the morning, then everyone going to school together, Yuno and Miyako sitting through class, various after-school activities, the girls getting together and chatting over dinner, and Yuno relaxing 
with a nice warm bath while reminiscing over a day spent doing absolutely fuck all. Because it follows such a predictable framework, one could, and probably will, get bored pretty easily watching multiple episodes at a time, making this one of the worst possible shows to marathon. Also, you'll pretty much know after watching a single episode whether or not the show is for you, so I recommend any potential viewer to start their Hitamati Sketch adventures with episode 11 of Hitamati Sketch X365, since I consider it to be the second best episode of the first two seasons. As for what I think is the best, that honor goes to episode 12 of X365. However, what makes this episode so special is the development, feels, and overall satisfaction from watching the characters for the past two seasons at the series' climax, so don't spoil yourself and just watch episode 11, okay? All in all, there isn't much to this anime in terms of story. There are some funny moments sprinkled throughout, some heartwarming moments, and goddamn even some mysterious moments. But when it comes down to it, Hitomari Sketch follows an underlying premise that's been done to death in slice of life anime nowadays with it merely serving as a plot device through which the different characters are brought together. So for its unoriginal storyline, with a few unique perks to itself, Hitomite Sketch's story garners a very meh 5.5 out of 10 and a neutral rating on the Hitomite Sketch Rundown. As most slice of lifes tend to do, Hitomite Sketch attempts to make up for its less than stellar plot with its own version of the tried and true, small but stellar cast of characters. Any real Slice of Life fan can tell you that the real meat of these kinds of series comes from the variety and enjoyability of its cast. And thankfully, this is one of the aspects where Hitomite Sketch shines miles above the rest. First off, we have our show's main star, the always adorable Yuno. An incoming freshman at Yamabuki High School, she's initially reserved of the idea of living away from home, but quickly opens up to those around her. She can be clumsy and even a little airheaded at times, but she always means well and cares deeply for those around her. Next, we have the ever so active freshman Miyako. Without fail, most of the quote unquote action in the series is centered around this hyperactive personality. Generally having less money than the rest of the girls, Miyako's apartment is often shown in serious disrepair and she's often hungry and willing to eat just about anything. In other words, she's the anime version of Morning Rescue! Me. But despite her seemingly crazy antics, she has quite the imagination and certainly deserves her place at such a prestigious school, even if all she does is sleep through class every single day. Now at this point, it'd be worth mentioning the Yuri undertones existing between certain pairs of characters. Though downplayed for the most part, there exists this unspoken yet undeniably present more than friends aspect between Yuno and Miyako. Speaking only for the first two seasons, it never really goes anywhere further than blushing and heartfelt words, but for our second pair of characters, Things are a bit more... explicit. We have Hiro, a second year senpai character overly obsessed with her weight, though still being in charge of all the daily cooking for her fellow tenants. She can be a bit tempered at times, but she undeniably harbors a special bond for the newfound friends at the Hidamari apartments. And finally, we have Saya, the self-proclaimed relationship veteran who'd much rather make up completely outrageous lies rather than say anything remotely embarrassing about herself. Unlike the other girls, Saya is a novelist who only wishes to learn how to draw illustrations for her own books, so she is oftentimes extremely busy or stressed out, leading to a variety of different problems. Yet, though she may fiercely deny it, she no doubt cares deeply for her friends and family. Now, unlike Yuno and Miyako's implied sexual tension, there exists a much more obvious girlfriend-girlfriend relationship between these two. While it's never outwardly stated that the two are actually going out, it's very clear that, at the very least, these two have their eyes set only on one another. However, despite all of this Yuri talk, do note that Hitomari Sketch is not a Yuri anime, far from it. The undertones, while present, are never acted upon and simply add another layer to the characters' personalities. But enough of all this Yuri business. Just based on my brief descriptions of this show's characters, many of you may incorrectly assume that they're nothing special or just more of the same. True, they do indeed fall under basic character archetypes, but as far as the notion that they're nothing special is concerned, well, you couldn't be more wrong. The real glamour comes from their interactions with one another. Although the interactions themselves are basic and not too praiseworthy, conversations, a few games, and so on, you as a viewer can truly feel the relationships being portrayed. That is, the way the characters act around one another while together, as well as the subtle differences when one or multiple persons are absent, give the characters a very fleshed out feeling. Unlike the over-the-top drama or the exaggerated and sometimes forced comedy you find in other shows, 
The characters here act as any relatively normal person would act in the situations they find themselves in, which, while coming off as boring to some, is a breath of fresh air in a market full of overused tropes and cliches. So even if their biographies aren't so deep, their presentation most definitely is. Over time, some noticeable but mostly subtle changes occur with each character's personalities. It wouldn't normally be too noticeable, but since the story is presented out of order, the slightly different auras that each character gives off in sometimes back-to-back -back episodes really contrast with each other and makes you realize just how much they've grown and developed since the chronological beginning. And it's through these interactions that Hidomani Sketch can pull off such low-key humor, such a mundane setting, and such an overused premise as well as it does. Because you see, one does not simply watch Hidomani Sketch for its plot. On the contrary, you watch it for the characters, and that's a fact. There are many more faces and names to look out for in the Hidomani Sketch universe, from Yoshinoya Sensei's clumsy but well-intended antics to the stuttering martial arts master principal to the always busy with something landlord. Unlike our main characters, these side characters never really change and are mainly used for comedic purposes. While chuckle-worthy, this brand of humor can get to be a bit repetitive sometimes. Nevertheless, we do get a small glimpse into Yoshinoya Sensei's life at various points, but not so much as to simply reaffirm her caring yet clumsy role in the story. Even though some parts of the show were more entertaining to watch than others, I can say with complete honesty that there is never a dull moment for me in the series, which is a great feat for any slice of life anime. So for its simplistic main cast eliciting complex interpersonal interactions with a small but always entertaining group of people, Hidomaji Sketch's characters garner a respectable 7.2 out of 10 and a good rating on the Hidomaji Sketch Rundown. As an admitted fanboy of Shaft Animation and their work, I've come to realize that most of their stuff tends to fall into one of two categories, shit and Hidomaji Sketch. No, but seriously, you have the quote-unquote slideshow method that involves a mixture of traditional animation spliced between different artsy methods of flashing various text and or images across the screen. Originally used to save on animation costs, it sort of becomes Shaft's trademark at this point, spawning its own following of both haters and fanboys alike. Then you have the more normal method, a simple display of traditional animation with a neck-breaking head turner vibe thrown in for good measure. While still having a Shaft feel, these types of shows don't really stand out with their artwork as much as the slideshow shows do, but it's nothing to cry home about. Thankfully, Hidomadi Sketch more closely follows the former method than anything else. Even though it's hard to describe, the show uses different eye catches and sudden scene changes, as well as random English and Japanese text, real life images of everyday objects, and a very unique coloring scheme to give this series its own particular style. Not to mention the infamous wide face character designs that appear at the drop of a hat and enhance the immersion just that much more. It fits the show so well, at least in my opinion, though people who aren't exactly fond of Shaft's trademark style may be off put by it. That isn't to say that this show doesn't utilize traditional animation to its fullest. Though admittedly the characters are sitting down and eating half of the time, but when there actually is animation to be done, it is done very fluidly. Being a slice of life series, most people would expect a relatively low emphasis on high quality animation, but you'd be dead wrong. Kyoto Animation proved with Nichijo that not only can a pure slice of life series be animated beautifully, vividly, and crisply, but it proved that a slice of life series' animation could damn well put even the most action heavy of shows to shame. While not quite that well done, Hidomaji Sketch does come close at many points, especially in its opening sequences. With all that said, however, there are a couple of drawbacks worth mentioning. First, while the majority of the show is very well done, there are times where a frame will remain still for an unnaturally long time or the animation will feel very sloppy, almost as if it was in a rush to be completed. As I said, it's a rare occurrence but it does happen on more than one occasion. This is Shaft after all. And for the second, there's a very noticeable increase in animation quality in Hidomaji Sketch X365, meaning that in comparison, the first season feels almost sloppy in a way. While still good, X365 and beyond has shown us what Shaft can do with this show, so the first is definitely a bit underwhelming in that regard. But all in all, Hidomaji Sketch's presentation is top of the line. It deserves every bit of praise it gets, and even if there are a few hiccups here and there, it's one of the best looking shows I've ever seen. So for its art city style perfectly befitting of the show's mood and feel, Hidomaji Sketch's art and animation scores an easy 8.2 out of 10, and a good rating on the Hidomaji Sketch Rundown. Right off the bat, I'll let it be known that I'm not a very big stickler for music in anime. In fact, other than the openings and endings, I don't even notice the music half the fucking time. Heck, and even then, I usually only listen to them once or twice and skip the rest unless it's a song I particularly liked, which doesn't happen very often. With that said, the openings to both Hidomaji Sketch and X365 are two songs I would never, ever consider skipping. 
as they are quite possibly two of the most catchy and upbeat songs I've ever heard. For such a low-key, relaxing, and actionless show, the openings really pump you up and get you in the mood to watch the show, only to have that energy fall back down as the show takes its course. So you can rest assured knowing that the opening performances do not disappoint, especially in X365. The endings, however, not so great. They take the opposite approach and play relaxing, slow music which, after watching half an hour of fuck all happening, probably isn't the best of strategies. They look and sound nice, but the urge to skip to the next episode preview was too damn high. As for my thoughts on the music overall, I thought it was… okay. Kinoari Sketch uses lots of calm, soothing music to set the mood. Imagine the kinds of tunes you'd expect to hear in a massage parlor, and you pretty much have the show's soundtrack. Other than a couple of really catchy iCat sequences, the music never really stood out to me. It fits the mood of the show quite nicely, but doesn't stand out as being anything more than slightly above average. So for its use of a fitting, yet generic all the same soundtrack, as well as very well done opening and ending sequences, even if I can't vouch for the latter's placement at the end of the show of all places, Hidden Under Sketch's soundtrack scores an average-ish 5.9 out of 10 and a neutral rating on the Hidden Under Sketch rundown. You know, Hidden Under Sketch is one of those shows you'll either love or hate. It's character-based, artsy, yet completely plotless nature will be off-putting to many. Heck, I've seen hordes of so-called Slice of Life fans toss this show away as too boring and many fellow Shaft fags that just couldn't handle this show, despite how appealing its art style may be. But that's okay, because this show's not for everyone. But for those of us who it does click with, you're in for one hell of a ride. The art style is gorgeous, the characters are so much fun to watch, and even though the music may not be too praiseworthy, Hinomite Sketch is indeed one of the best Slice of Life series to ever be made. Just the other day, Shaft streamed their first promo for the post-Honeycomb Hito Mighty Sketch special featuring Hito and Saya as they face graduation and the reality that their seemingly perfect lives together will soon come to a sudden and heartbreaking close. It's a drastic change from the happy-go-lucky tone of the series and I found myself in tears because I genuinely felt the sadness the characters portrayed and heck, I've experienced more painful goodbyes than I care to remember. Only three other series have made such an emotional impact upon me, so for me to cry over a promotional trailer? This series is doing something right. Once more, for anyone curious to give the show a go, I'd recommend trying out episode 11 of Hino Mighty Sketch X365, my personal second favorite episode of the first two seasons. Who knows, maybe the show will become a new favorite, just as it's become a new favorite of mine. And even if you don't like it, I'm sure you'll still come out appreciative of its lovable characters and strong artistic focus. I think that if after six years and four seasons, Hino Mighty Sketch can still consistently rank among Japan's top 10 selling shows, then it must be doing something right. But enough about that. With a perfect 10 out of 10 for my personal enjoyment, let's bring up the scoreboard, shall we? With my completely objective 10 factored in, Hito Mighty Sketch receives a good rating of 7.36 and a recommendation from me to at least watch a single episode, just to see if it clicks. And with that, I'll leave you with my final verdict and a little music to calm your soul. This has been Andrew with Anime Days, and I will see you all next time. <laughs> I'm sorry.